Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. My goodness, there's a lot of things going on right now in the news. Pretty significant stuff. Although I normally don't make these walk and talks a news thing. There's just some significant things that I think need to be discussed. A lot of stuff going on with this Ohio train derailment it's finally coming out. Um, a lot more, shall we say, hard evidence that there are, um, there's toxic chemicals in the air, in the soil, the water around that area uh, for weeks now. It's been talked about. Everyone's worried about it. A lot of people, you know, EPA and government saying, oh, it's nothing. Well, it looks like it's something. There's hundreds of animals that are showing up dead in wooded areas and waterways and stuff around uh, that site. And some of the, the testing, uh, you know, lab tests are finally coming back that there are very high toxic levels. So, I, I mean, at this point, it's, it's probably what's done is done. I know that's a, a harsh statement, but it's, I would say it's gonna be true. Uh, they're, have been trying to remove soil and water in that area and then go dump it somewhere else. Probably not any good solution at this point to it. Um, and it's just, you know, it shows the inadequacy of government, how they, you know, can't handle anything serious. And so if any of you still think for a moment that if something really, really big, and I'm not downplaying the Ohio thing, but I'm talking like nuclear war big, you know, nationwide blackout, EMP, nationwide cyber attack, bank failure, you know, kind of big, that the government is gonna be there to take care of you and help you, you're sadly mistaken. Um, other thing is the narrative is changing again. Uh, for the last three years, People have been banned and canceled and censored and lost their livelihood, all sorts of things, because they have said that they believe that the whole <coughs> came out of China and that it was very possibly purposely leaked. And of course, it's been no, 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 no. Well, now all of a sudden that's changed. First, it was a the energy commission i don't even know what they would have to do with it first it was supposed to be a leaked um it leaked document from the energy commission but yesterday the director of the fbi came out publicly and said yes they believe that um, they have pretty solid evidence that the whole coffee cough uh, was leaked purposely uh, out of wuhan now i know some of you are like ah you know, vindication of, of what we, you know, have been saying for years now. Well, that, that's maybe true, but I don't believe that's the point of this. I don't believe that they're finally just saying, okay, okay, you guys were right, we were wrong. No, it's a narrative change because for the last three years, um, part of the narrative has been, oh, we can't blame China. You know, there are good, we don't want anyone you know, to take it out on anyone that's Asian and we don't want, you know, anyone to blame China and all this kind of stuff. Well, now China is going to be the enemy. Not just because of this, but because of other things. Because the whole Russia thing. Um, I, I mean, I don't know why China just doesn't come right out and say, yeah, we're sending them troops and missiles and tanks and anything else they want. Because at this point, the West is pretty you know, assure of themselves that it is happening, whether it's happened already or that it will happen. There's been information that China has been pro providing sal satellite imagery for, you know, certain units in, in Russia. I mean, it, they're, they're doing the same thing that we are. It's, it's pretty much at this point, a proxy war between China and the United States. We all know that. But I think that with the narrative change, we are, we are seeing things, again, like I've been saying for days now, we are watching the chessboard being set into place. Doesn't mean that 
conflict between us and China is days away. I mean, it's always possible. We flew a spy plane very near their borders uh, in the Taiwan Strait, which got them all up in arms. And apparently they, because of that, they immediately activated a lot of their troops in that area. So, I mean, it's possible it could be close. Most likely, things are just being set up still. But I think in the long term, the likelihood of an engagement between uh, China and the United States is getting to be pretty good. So that's significant right there. Very, very significant. And it, you know, there's always people saying, yeah, but we could kick China's hind in. I'm not saying we can't. I'm not, I don't think personally a victory, military victory over China is as, is guaranteed as many people think. But <clears throat> whether we win or not, it's going to be devastating. It's going to be a war unlike America and probably the world has ever seen. But possibly the biggest thing that I saw uh, yesterday evening, and this is something, maybe I'm wrong, but this is something that I very much believe could cause things to erupt within hours, days. I mean, by the end of this week, it's possible. Um, yesterday, in uh, yesterday afternoon's video, I said that and reported on that the International Atomic Agency, whatever, I can't remember the exact acronym, but that they had come to the conclusion that Iran has enriched uranium up to about 83.7%. Um, now, if I, if I remember my numbers correctly, and if I'm wrong, please don't beat me up too terribly. But I believe under the original agreement with Iran, they weren't supposed to go over 60%. And it was something like 300 kilograms or something like that of, of material. And now they're well into the multiple thousands of kilograms and they've enriched it to 83.7%, just shy of what's needed for at least an atomic weapon. Um, <clears throat> well, last night, a top Pentagon official uh, stated that they believe, the Pentagon believes, that Iran is 12 days away, 12 days away from building a nuclear weapon. Now, is it really 12 days away? Does that mean that if they, it's possible if things go right, that they could? I mean, you know, it's the Pentagon. They, they get things right so often. I mean, it could be 12 months. But honestly, it doesn't matter because now there's an official statement from, you know, the, the mommy, the mommy state, you know, the mommy military, the one that takes care of everyone is what I mean, um, that Iran is... 12 days away from building a nuke. And as you all should know, Israel for a very long time, but especially recently, has said that they will absolutely destroy Iran if they get close to building a nuclear weapon, that they will not allow Iran to exist with a nuclear weapon. And there's been a lot of indication that the United States would be involved in that. Um, I saw that also yesterday evening, you see Israel has been kind of indicating that they're kind of cozying up a little bit with Russia. At first they weren't, then they were kind of a little bit. Well, apparently the United States has convinced Israel and Netanyahu to distance themselves from Russia, which I think it's interesting that that came out about the same time as this 12, you know, Iran having a, a nuke in 12 days, I suspect <clears throat> the United States said, hey, we know that you're making plans to go in and destroy Iran. And if you want our help on that, you better sever your ties with Russia. That's just what I suppose. suppose. But the point is, this is major. Uh, we're talking a, a, a very major conflict could potentially be beginning to erupt in the Middle East. I don't think, but I could be wrong on this one, and I'll admit that from the beginning. I don't think it would be like 
things that we've seen in the recent days and weeks where Israel goes in and drops, you know, two or three bombs, maybe sends a drone on a couple sites that, you know, aren't that big of a deal. And then Iran does the, a reversal of a few attacks on something with Israel. Um, <clears throat> this is a big deal. Iran has put a lot of time and money into developing a nuke. And so if Israel only goes in and destroys that site, I think the retaliation would be significant. It was just, I think, last week that Iran announced that they have um, medium-range missiles now that are capable of reaching Israel. That they can, they can strike just about anywhere in Israel now. And so they have the de delivery system and now they potentially could be days away. Now, of course, I know a lot of you are saying, well, typically you do a test just because they're the first time they make one doesn't mean it's successful. I know, but it's the Iranians. They may just say, you know what? We got a couple built. Let's use it. Let's take out Jerusalem. Let's take out Tel Aviv. <clears throat> It's possible. And I know that Israel realizes that. And while the world is distracted with Russia and Ukraine and China and Taiwan, is there a possibility that the world war might actually just start between Iran and Israel? Because, you know, Iran is pretty much in bed now with Russia and, and, and China. It was just the other day, uh, the head of Iran, I think met with Xi Jinping, at least not that long ago. There's been a lot of, a lot of stuff between the three of them. Uh, Iran's wanting to be part of BRICS. So again, the, the lines are being drawn. And <clears throat> telling you if there's any truth whatsoever to this Iran being 12 days away from a nuke whether how like I said it doesn't matter how accurate that is it's now become an official proclamation and Israel could easily just say listen it doesn't matter if they're 12 months or 12 years it's officially 12 days and we're going to act on that over the next few days, a lot of things could change. I know we've thought that a lot over the last few years, and it may end up being just like it's been for the last few years. Nothing, nothing happens, or only a little bit of something happens. But there's a lot of things going on, and trust me, I have barely, barely scratched the surface uh, with things that are, that are happening uh, in regards to all this. There's Flights have been canceled in and around places in Europe, uh, Belarus, uh, air, uh, <clears throat> airways have been cleared, meaning that, you know, they're, they're blocking and not allowing planes to fly in certain areas. There's definite troop movement of Ukrainian and Russian troops, um, possibly dealing with whether it's Moldova or Belarus. There's just a lot of stuff going on. We had, um, Two top officers uh, that works at the one of the nuclear silo facilities and I believe it was North Dakota were relieved of duty because of lack of confidence. No real details of what that means. Um, was it because they felt that they couldn't push the button when necessary? Was it possibly a case of espionage? Was it just because they were drunks? I mean, who knows? We don't know. But it's interesting that at a time like this, that we're relieving officers of duty that have some kind of, you know, control or influence uh, or job relating to our, our nuclear weapons defense systems. A lot of things happening. And as much as sometimes we get the, the kind of the overload 
and we're like, ah, I need a break from this. This is just too much. I get it. I do the same things. There are days that I just want to turn the world off, go sit in a cave, you know, or sit by the river for the day and just pretend like nothing's going on. But right now we need to be pretty cautious, making sure things are topped off, making sure we're ready to move, go, hunker down, whatever the plan is. And a pretty quick amount of time. I know that the whole Israel Iran thing doesn't mean an immediate danger to here at home with us. But depending on how things play out, it could be the kickoff. Okay? Not saying it will, but it could be the kickoff. And I think that there's a lot of you probably have in mind of the, the biblical ramifications of Israel becoming more directly involved in conflict. So certainly be staying on your toes, keeping your powder dry, that kind of stuff, because <clears throat> things are certainly heating up. Uh, get, get ready, folks. Stock up, get what you can, top things off. Ammo, food, water, medical, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know the drill. It's time to get your houses in order. Prepare mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Folks, we are living in uncertain times where chaos seems to be around every corner. With wars and rumors of wars, economic collapse, pandemics, and more, we should strive daily to become more prepared mentally, physically, and of course spiritually. Please check out My Patriot Supply for all your preparedness needs. My Patriot Supply offers ready hour food, Alexa Pure water filters, and many other emergency and survival products. My Patriot Supply is an American owned company run by Americans producing American made food. Emergency food from My Patriot Supply has a 25 plus year shelf life. It's simple to fix and delicious to eat. With My Patriot Supply, you can sleep at ease at night knowing that you and your family have the emergency food to last through the coming times. To find out more, click on the link in the description below or go to preparewithtravis.com.